by asking you about team news. You obviously had this winter bug that meant a couple of players missed the match against Leeds. What's the latest there? Yeah, there have been um, a few of them that haven't been able to train. Um, we picked some um, knocks uh, during the game against Leeds as well. But um, hopefully today, when everybody's back, um, we would have better news. Are you able to tell us any names on that, on the new knocks? Uh, not yet. And how about Kieran, T um, uh, Kieran Tierney and um, his ankle problem? What What's the latest with that one as well? Well, he's uh, progressing training. Uh, let's see again how he is today. Uh, he felt that it'd be better the last few days, um, but he wasn't 100% the other day to start the game. So, uh, again, we will see what happens in the last uh, 48 hours. In his place, Nuno Tavares really impressed at the, against Aston Villa. What have you made of his debut and what has been the conversation with him like since? Yeah, he had an impressive uh, performance to have uh, the first Premier League debut and um, and play the way he did uh, with that intensity as well that he's not used to. Um, credit to the boy. Um, I really like what he did. Uh, he's still really young. It's improving. He sets all really well and um, and he had a really good performance. Against Leicester tomorrow, you are two teams that seem to be on the up. Do you see many similarities between yourself and Leicester? I don't know, both teams that uh, for sure they're going to play to win the game. Um, we both know that it's going to be a tough game. Um, we have some experiences against them as well. And um, and just prepare the game the best possible way. And the last two times you've been to the King Power, you've come away with victories, 3-1 last season. Um, what do you think it has been that's worked so well there in the, in the last couple of trips? I don't know. The teams has changed. Uh, they can play in different formations. Um, they have some principles that um, that they respect really well. I think Brendan and the staff they've done a tremendous job over there, and uh, we're gonna face uh, again that can have different faces um, because of the way they play, and um, and it will be difficult. Arsenal had a more straightforward route to the EFL Cup quarterfinals than Leicester. Do you think that will play a part? We both have to play 90 minutes, except of the of the penalties. We have a really tough game against um, the most intense Premier League um, team that is Leeds, and um, and now we feel recovered and ready for for the next one. Many people thought the best 45 minutes of Arsenal season came against Aston Villa. Did you feel that, and and how do you feel that the team are moving in this 4-4-2? I was really pleased with the performance, uh, with the energy that we had, um, with every intention from the first minute uh, to do what we believed that could hurt Villa and we continue like that uh, throughout the game. So it's another step, that game is gone um, and now the full focus is just on, on Leicester. Thank you. Jeremy, Sky? Yeah, hi Mikel, um, just on Eddie Nketiah, he hasn't been a Premier League match day squad so far this season, but he was really, really good against Leeds. Is he going to make the squad this weekend? And, and can you say anything more about Eddie's future at the club? He is another one that is constantly pushing, uh, and every time he's got a chance, um, he takes that chance. Obviously, there are other players involved in those positions. Um, the same with other players that haven't had uh, a lot of minutes because we have not had any games in Europe, unfortunately, this season. And we have to manage that situation and reward the players that um, they deserve. Sure. And Burton then again showed his quality, but how happy is he right now being the number two keeper? And can that continue with Burton for the rest of the season, you think? Well, I think he competed really well the other day and, uh, and he showed his level. And um, that's why he's fierce for uh, when he needs to play to do it at, at the best level and when he's not support the teammates like um, everybody else does. Um, Mikel, Arsenal on the road this season, only scored one goal. Um, you played 4-4-2 against Villa successfully. Is that the way to really perhaps score more on the road, do you think? Maybe changing the formation when you travel? We have uh, different uh, options to play with, different players that bring different qualities and, um, and formations that can adapt in relation to what we want to do in the game or because of the opponent and, um, and that's it. And then scoring goals or not, um, it's just uh, a consequence of the amount of chances they create, but sometimes, unfortunately, it's just about efficiency as well. Sure. It's been quite a week in your old club, Barcelona. cumin has been sacked. They're ninth in the Liga. There's talk about Xavi taking over. I mean, what a mess. What do you make of it all there? 
Again, that uh, yeah, it's been a lot going on the, in the last few years. Obviously, how COVID have affected um, the way that uh, obviously you have to overcome a situation like the departure of Messi, which has been um, the key player for many many years, and and all that takes time. And um, and we'll see. I just hope that everything works out um, well. You have the game being linked with the job this week, and Mikel, anything you like to say about that? Is, it, is the Barca job a job you covered one day? That I'm extremely happy at Arsenal, and I feel privileged to be here, and uh, my only focus is here. Can we just ask you finally to about five subs? Um, you were a big supporter of five subs back in 2020. Would you like to see five subs return in the Premier League when some people say it favours the big teams? I don't know. Um, there have been different situations. With COVID World, obviously, we had one situation. We had a lot of uh, struggles and a lot of games in a really condensed calendar. I don't think that's going to change because the way it's looking uh, with the World Cup and, and, and the willingness to play every two years and play then the African Cups and play another two Cups and play every single competition that is possible, uh, we have to think really about how we're going to take care of those players um, so we don't burn them. And that's a that's a good possibility. Thank you. Thank you. Ian Talksport. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Hi, Michelle. How Hi. are you? Good, thank you. Uh, I'm unbeaten in eight games, six of those in the Premier League, two in the Premier League Cup, fourteen points in your last eighteen. What on earth have you done in the last month or so to turn things around so spectacularly? Go game by game. Try to improve every single game. Try to keep the spirits. And the perspective in the right place uh, when things are not working and um, and the same when the things are getting better because there's still a lot of things to improve. Um, we know that um, we don't want to be where we are still. We want to be the best and to do that there is a lot of things that um, have to get better. What, what in particular do you think your, your team still have to improve on? I think in every department we can get better. Um, the use of the ball, the understanding of the game, how we many situations, um, how we deal with moments of pressure, um, in everything, every department I think we still have a lot of improvements to make, um, but there are some basics that we're doing much better, which helps a lot to win football matches. There were so many positives from the Aston Villa game, um, in terms of player performances, are you tempted just to let the same team go again? No, what I'm really pleased, what I'm really pleased is that um, the players are knocking on the door with the right attitude to play and uh, and that's giving us uh, options and um, and just raises the level of the team. Uh, I don't see anybody saying or trying to find excuses when he's not playing or trying to blame somebody when he's not playing. Just trying to put the best possible work out there in training and then talk on the pitch, which is the best way. Talk outside the pitch is really easy because you can always find excuses and blame everybody else. It's when you have the opportunity, now is the moment to talk and show that um, that you can do it. And I really liked uh, in many examples what the players have done when they've been in those positions. Just two more from me. First of all, what does success now look like for Arsenal this season? Have you, have you changed it? I mean, for example, we're in the quarterfinals of a cup competition. Do you have to win a cup this year to be successful, or is it to get back into Europe? I mean, we're you know we're we're about a third of the way through the season. I think to be successful, we have to play good first. <laughs> we have to be dominant, and and we have to have the identity that we have in every single game, and um, and compete and compete. And we are really difficult team to beat. And if that happens, we have a better chance. That would be the consequence. Would be the success. But um, I just focus on on the process and and what is in our hand to to try together. And finally, you've come through the storm this season of being under pressure and people talking about you and your job. Uh, this week is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and, and Nuno Espirito Santo. As a fellow manager, do you, do you feel sorry when you, you see that or do you think, well, thank goodness it's not me here this week? It's always about the results, Ian, and, and we all know that uh, and the rest it doesn't really matter. So when you are having difficulties getting results, um, you're going to be in that position, there's nothing new for anybody, but uh, but yes, uh, obviously you feel because you know what you have to be through, so um, you you feel that uh, obviously it's not a nice moment for, for, for those that are, are going through that. Cheers, Rick. I'll be back in Leicester. Thank you. Thank you. George, BBC.
Thanks, Mark. Mikel, good morning. I just wondered, this, this bug, how many players are affected by it at the moment? And, and what is it? Are the players being sick? Is it flu? What, can you give us a bit more about it, please? Uh, yes, it was a bit of uh, sickness and and just feeling tummy aches and stuff like that. Um, hopefully today everybody will be will be okay. Uh, is, is Ben White? Do you think he'll be fit for, for tomorrow? Because I know he's been an important player for you. As a, as he hasn't coach. trained yet, so again we'll have to wait till for two days, see how he's feeling, and, and make the the decision then. Um, I'll just ask you about your captain, Aubameyang. You've done an interview earlier this week and you were just talking about how much effort he's putting in. What's led to that? Is he, is he doing anything different? Have you sat down and spoke to him? I mean, he's scoring goals and running a lot more. What's, yeah. what's anything changed? Well, we had various conversations, and um, and obviously when you have a season where, as a team, we haven't fulfilled uh, our expectations, and individually um, we haven't, we have to find the reasons why, and, and how we can change it, how we can improve them, how we can help him to improve uh, certain things that are going to have a huge impact in the team. And he's been so willing um, to do it from the, from the start. And um, I'm so pleased because, um, again, his role is different to the one that he had two or three years ago. And, um, and now he needs to lead in every sense. And, um, and he's doing that, and I'm really happy with that. Is he, is he enjoying it, this, this new role he's got? Do you think? Because the goals, he's got seven this season. He probably needs to do more in the league. But how, how has he responded to that when you had that chat with him? I think he is, and I think you can see on the pitch, um, he's playing with a smile on his face, he's, he's transmitting energy, passion, um, willingness, and not only there, but outside the pitch as well. Um, that's what he wants. A happy Oba um, is, is linked with his character, and that's why he's able to transmit uh, to everybody, and, uh, and that energy, it's, um, it's always positive for the team. Uh, can I just ask you about one Leicester player? What do you know about... Pats and Dakar, he's had quite a start since he joined there. Have you been aware of him for a few years? Yeah, we've been aware of him. And um, I think, again, Leicester, they've been really strong and uh, and clever in their recruitment over the years. That's what they have been able to build the team that um, that they have to them. And, um, and yeah, he looked a really strong player. Thanks. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Nick, haters. Hi. Hi. If Ben White does come come back into training as fit, presumably he will start alongside Gabriel on, on Saturday. Can you tell us what um, Ben has added to the side, added to the squad, and about how, how that partnership has developed? Well, we have different options, but obviously we wanted to recruit somebody um, that could stray away and naturally uh, adapt to the way that we want to play. Um, and Ben had all the qualities that we were looking for. He's, he's happy to defend in open spaces. He's really good in in duels. He has a huge personality to play when we demand him to, um, to make the process with the ball um, in different ways against different kind of press or when they don't press and he has time on the ball to make the right decisions. And, um, and he has the anger. And I really like his character as well when I met him. Um, and that's why we made the decision to, to sign him. And I know they don't speak the same language, but they seem to speak the same sort of footballing mentality with Gabriel. That's quite a partnership, isn't it? Yeah, but the language is important, and Gabi has improved um, a lot in that in that sense this season. And for any for any sense about partnerships, uh, coaching and communication is is key, and um, and does help him obviously in the back line. What was signing White one of the key decisions to allowing Williams Saliba to go out on loan again this season? Well, everything is linked. Obviously, the amount of centre-backs that we could have in the team, um, the issues that we had in the past because the, the numbers that we had and, and the unbalance that we had in the position. And, uh, and because of William's uh, decision in his career right now to make the minutes that he's making and the progress that he's making, we believe that it was um, the right thing to do. Did you see that performance against Mbappe, Neymar and Messi? Yes, I did. Have yeah. you spoken to him since then? How do you keep in touch with him? Yeah, we've been uh, as a club as well. We are always in touch. Um, they went to see that game as well. Um, Edu and Ben were there to, to watch him and quickly keep the, a close eye on him and the progress that he's making. And obviously, he's our player. And um, we all do with all the long players that we have. Just, just finally on that, then, is it fair to say if he was at the club this season, he would be maybe playing against Leeds on a Tuesday night and then back on the bench? If, but he's uh, not. <laughs> at the moment, he's there and he played uh, a different game that week, and uh, and this is it. And he continues to 
to do what he needs to do, which is play a lot of games and, and playing well. And then a battle to get in the team next season, presumably. That's a decision that we'll make in the summer. Obviously, he's our player, and uh, naturally that would happen. And we would have to sit down and decide what uh, the best step is next. Thanks, Nick. Charles, go. Hello, Cal. Um, just on Ben White, um, he, I don't know if you saw it, he gave an interview the other day where he said he doesn't, he's not interested in watching football. And it caused quite a bit of debate, quite a few headlines, and you know, people were having their say on it. Where, where, where do you stand on that? Would you encourage Ben and your players to watch football as much as they can to continue learning, or do, does it not matter in, in your view? I think there are phases in the career of a footballer that he goes through uh, more focus in other things than in football. But some of, I, I met people that they, they don't see a lot of football, but they watch all their games three times. Um, and others that they don't want to watch their own games and, uh, and watch themselves playing, but they can watch any other game. You have to find the right balance. For me, the most important thing is that he shows the passion to play the game um, every single day, to train, um, to and have the enjoyment um, playing football, which is why he has. And then, um, and then the way he competes and the way he wants to improve. And um, if we believe that this is better, it's something that we will discuss with him. But um, at the moment, what he's doing is working fine for him. I think Patrick Vieira said that it, it, he felt it did matter. And he said that Thierry Henry would watch countless games and, and pointed to other examples. So view is not an essential learning tool for a player to, to watch as much as... as you know, they can. I think it has to come natural, like anything. If you force a player to do something he's not interested, um, outside here is very, very difficult. Um, hopefully, you can fit something within his body um, that can create, okay, I want to start to look at this in a different way, in a different league, in a different team, and, uh, and try to fit that shit. And um, sometimes it happens. I think him, he and Gabriel are both under 24. William, who you spoke about, is 20. I mean, is there a way that you can you could accommodate those three next season all in the same squad at such a young age when you need to play to develop? I think there is there is room. Again, it would depend with what happens with uh, other players, and that's not a conversation to have uh, now. Just on Martin Odegaard, he didn't start against Aston Villa. I think it's one goal and one assist so far this season. And when you look at his numbers, they're not quite as high across the board as they were during his loan spell. Are you a bit concerned about Martin's form since he's come back this season? Well, he came back a little bit late. Uh, don't forget that uh, as well. And uh, credit to, to him. He had an injury in precision. Uh, he picked up an injury as well the week before. So he's missed some games. And uh, when he's played as well, I think he has, he's done it in a really good level. Um, but the numbers can change quickly. But the numbers, I don't think they are fair as well because he's missed some, some games. Thanks, Charles. Just one more, Mark. Quickly, Mark, on, um, on over. You, you've spoken about Bio and Emil needing more end products in the final third. Is that something that you would challenge Martin to do now going forward? Because he's clearly got the quality to produce in that final third. Absolutely. All the players that are playing the attacking line have to contribute. Um, at the maximum level that is required to achieve uh, the numbers um, that you need to be the best team in the league. And uh, if you don't, just it's just, it's just maths. Um, you won't get there. Thanks. Yeah.